The excitement among biology students rang out as they traveled nearly seven hours on two buses to Long Beach, California. With sleeping bags and backpacks in hand, about 85 DSU students boarded the RV Challenger for a two-hour boat ride to Catalina Island. For some, it was about to become a seasick adventure. Um, if you start to feel seasick, uh, the best thing to do is just lay down and take a nap. Have you ever been on a boat? Yeah, yes. a couple times, yeah. Uh, okay, you get seasick? Well, no, yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Pacific Ocean swell turned over a rocking high tide as five-foot waves pounded against the small passenger ship. The arrival to the desert island couldn't come soon enough. The new explorers settled in for their remote stay on White's Landing. This area of the island has limited water and electricity and is used mainly for educational purposes. Most of the island is overseen by the Catalina Island Conservancy. Um, we do all kinds of activities, not just um, discovering the island as well as the animals, the plants, and um, just how they all interact here on the island and how it's unique to this island compared to the mainland. This isn't the first time Dixie State students have landed here. This active learning field trip has become a tradition for biology students over the past four years. They learn firsthand about the habitat, geology, ecology, and way of life on a desert island. I chose Catalina Island because a lot of the students that go to Dixie are from Utah, are from uh, the surrounding area and, and don't have much experience with the ocean and the ocean's a big part of what we talk about in environmental science and so I thought we could hit some of the important topics and also give students an experience that they might not have had before which would help cement um, the things that we've been learning. One of the first hikes on the island allowed students to discover some of the nine endemic plant species exclusive to this island. And so we spend a lot of time looking at uh, plants that are native to the island. In fact, there are some that only exist, they're endemic to this island alone. Uh, some that are endemic to all the Channel Islands. They were even able to taste and smell many of the plants along the trail. This is lemonade berry. Okay? And you can literally take these berries and crunch them up and put them in some water and it'll taste a little bit like lemonade. With binoculars in hand, students also found several species of native birds, like this red-headed acorn woodpecker that pounds its food into trees. We saw a lot of northern mockingbirds and of course starlings, European starlings, which are sort of taking over the island. And then we also saw a family that's of acorn woodpeckers that's lived here for a long, long time. Uh, and we talked about each of those, and a few seabirds, so we had a good day. The constantly moving and changing tides also bring in several sea creatures, often found hiding in the coves. Well, this one's just, he's right here. And when I put my finger on it, it's like he's pulling on it a little bit. While snorkeling, these students were graced with the capture of this sea hare. What do you they got? named Harold which is supposed to give what you good it? luck if you kiss Mexican it. Mexican sea hare. It's related to sea slugs. It's part of the mollusk yeah. family. Kiss it, for um, kiss it and you get five years of good luck. It's I'm so good luck. cool <laughs> feeling. <laughs> the island itself is just as diverse as the plants and animals found here. While walking along the shoreline, students learn that the geological makeup of one side differs from the other by nearly 100 million years. Tectonic plate activity from subsidence caused one side to rise up, while the other side shows volcanic rock rich in quartz. It's got a moderate amount of silica in it, which makes it not as explosive as some uh, volcanoes. It's not on the scale of Yellowstone or anything. The blue schist rock from the oldest formations can be found scattered along the shoreline. It's got a lot of sparkle to it, but the grain of the rock mimics wood. And at night, so students are shown right how sea life from the bottom comes alive. Students tested the salty seawater where they found microorganisms too small for the naked eye to see. It's said there can be up to a million of them in just one drop of water. You can see the little thing moving. It looks like a little insect. Documenting their experience and findings was also part of their active learning assignment. Students put their discoveries into words by using literature, describing what they've seen and telling stories. Sciences are based on facts, but literature tells stories. Stories that help students understand the sciences in a different way. 
A hike to the cross at the top of this mountain was perhaps one of the most breathtaking scenes. As dawn breaks over Catalina Island, students awaken from their slumber to start their journey back to the mainland. On their way, the students spotted a school of dolphins following the ship. As they reach the harbor, students learned how to test the temperature of the water and check for clarity, alkalinity, and salinity. 0.27. What we do is we lower it down this down into the water until you can't see it anymore. Thanks to help from the Catalina Island Marine Institute, they sift through the ocean sediment, finding the infauna that live in the soils below. We found a brittle star, we found a ghost shrimp, we found a peacock shrimp, and some worms. Worm and a, a clam. <laughs> and it was the first time that many were able to physically touch fish that are found living along the bottom of the ocean. Stingrays and tonguefish were among the highlights. Oh! I've never had this opportunity, especially with like a stingray. I was so excited to be able to touch them and like feeling them and how slimy they are. Each student came back with their own favorite part of the Catalina experience. Uh, my favorite part about the trip was definitely snorkeling. I was the only one that was like really warm in the wetsuit, which was really weird. And then I also I, I saw a fox, and that was amazing. That's I wanted to do that for years, and I, it made my day. I love going in the ocean and seeing all the fish and all the birds, you know, flapping around. It was. It's just a great experience. I really love, like, look at this view. And I love the ocean. And another favorite part is, like, falling asleep to, like, just hearing the waves on the beach. It's so relaxing. Are I'm going to miss the ocean. Like, it's so calming. Bye! From Catalina Island, Melissa Anderson, CEC News.